respondent in relief, A, B, and C, and consequently sought an annulment of CI 135 in relief D. He also invited the court to injunct the second respondent from holding himself out as the president elect on the, the account of the errors described in the declaration in his relief E. For the court to and for the court to order a rerun between the petitioner and second respondent on account of the alleged effect of these errors in relief F. But as shown from the evaluations and analysis above, it was part of the petitioner's case in paragraph six of the petition that the first alleged error arose because of a misdescription of the number of total votes cast as total valid votes cast. The petitioner also asserted his knowledge of the total valid votes cast in paragraph 12 of the, his petition, and yet the petitioner is inviting the court to ignore the substantive truth of the result of the election and give him relief on the basis of the errors pointed out in his own petition. He is also inviting the court to use the mistakes he has described to tamper with the true and known result of the presidential election and the will of the people. By his relief A, it, it is only when the court opposed the error in the description of total votes cast instead of total valid votes that the declaration would be in breach of Article 63 Cross 3. Again, by relief F, a B, it is when the court ignores the substantive relief of the election, re results of the election, that it could it declare that no candidate won more than 50% of the votes. The petitioner is making his claim, knowing that if the court agrees, the court will essentially change the true outcome of the election. In the combined effects of in relief C and F, the petitioner is asking this court to find the oral declaration made on 9 December 2020 to be unconstitutional, null and void, and yet for this court to use void declaration to change the result of the election by ordering a rerun between the two leading candidates. These are submissions that must not appeal to any court of justice, equity, and good conscience. Issue 5 the alleged vote pardon. The last issue set down for this trial is whether or not the alleged vote pardon and other errors complained of by the petitioner affected the outcome of the presidential election results of 2020. The petitioner has alleged in his petition that the first respondent favored the second respondent with padded votes totaling 5,662 in 32 constituencies. In proof of this allegation, the petitioner tended through PW1 Mr. S. Edunketia is with F, which is a spreadsheet covering samples, sample details from 26 constituencies, showing the alleged vote pardon by certain officials of the first respondent in favor of the second respondent. It is pertinent to know that even though the pleadings of the petitioner alleges that the vote pardon took place in 32 constituencies, totaling 5,662 votes. PW1, in his witness statement, testified that the vote pardon rather took place in 26 constituencies and totaled 4,693 votes. We know that even though PW1 alleged in his witness statement that the vote pardon was done by some officials of the first respondent, his evidence did not name any alleged official. That leg of the allegation was not proof either. The allegation of vote pardon in favor of second respondent was denied by both respondents. Having been so denied, one expected the petitioner to adduce credible evidence to prove him. However, the only evidence adduced on this issue was the tendering of SBDF, the spreadsheet containing samples from 26 constituencies showing the alleged vote pardon. To be specific, the allegation as stated at paragraph 36 of Mr. C. Dinkatien's witness statement was that when the votes of second respondent obtained in all polling stations as shown on their respective pinches in the 26 constituencies aggregated, the resultant figure differs from the figure that was declared by first respondent for second respondent as captured on the summary sheets of the respective constituencies. Having alleged as above, one expected that the pinches of the 26 uh, stations in the 20 
actions of the polling stations in the 26 constituencies would have been exhibited to prove the vote pattern as alleged. This was not done, apart from the spreadsheet, which was self-serving document. PW1, Mr. Sebin Ketia admitted that what he had tended were only samples, but no effort was made to submit the rest, if indeed they existed. Besides the allegation of vote pardon, the petitioner also alleged that there, were, there was wrong aggregation of votes, totally 916 votes in favor of second respondent. This was contained in Exhibit E, tendered by PW1, Mr. C. Dunketia. We found the allegation of vote pardon very serious, since its occurrence undermines the integrity of an election. Its impact being that votes are unlawfully added to the votes of a candidate to increase the total votes of that candidate. We have observed already that this allegation was not proof as expected of the petitioner. However, assuming the votes pardon of four, the, assuming the votes pardon of 4,693 took place at all in favor of second respondents as alleged by PW1 in Exhibit F, this court would then have to ascertain its impact on the final results declared by the first respondent. Indeed, evidence on record clearly showed that the impact of the alleged vote pardon, even if proved, would have been very insignificant and would not have materially affected the outcome of the elections. It would therefore not have been a proper ground for the annulment of the 2020 presidential elections. This is so because if one deducts the alleged votes padded from the total valid votes obtained by the second respondent, he would still have crossed the more than 50% threshold required under Article 63 Clause 3 of the 1992 Constitution. This fact was established through the cross examination of PW1, Mr. Seedun Ketia, on 1st February 2021 by counsel for the second respondent as follows. Question. The original figure is 6,730,143. Subtract from the 4,693. What do you get? Answer. You get 6,725,720. Question. What is that figure as a percentage of 13,121,111? Answer, 51.295 percent. So you see that even if you were to deduct your alleged padded votes from the votes of the second respondent, he still crosses the 50 percent plus threshold. Answer, I disagree because samples cannot be subtracted from another population figure. We observe that PW1 from the above extract was merely being evasive. Since it is obvious that if we take away the alleged padded votes of 4,693 from the total valid votes of the second respondent as at 2nd December, 9 December 2020, as shown above, the second respondent will still have obtained more than 50% of the total valid votes cast, satisfying the threshold of Article 63, Clause 3 of the 1992 Constitution. On this issue, we are settled in our minds that the allegation of vote pardon, though serious in an election such as the presidential election, was not proved by credible evidence. Furthermore, even if the vote pardon took place, same was not material or substantial to change the final results so declared by the chairperson of the first respondent. In holding that the impact of the vote pardon, if even proof, could not have affected the declaration. We are emboldened by the decision of Lord Denny in the case of Morgan versus Simpson, 1975, 1 Queen's Bench 151, which was cited by counsel for the petitioner in his closing address. We are observed, however, that counsel for petitioner only referred us to only one of the three propositions articulated by Lord Denny. In that case, Lord Denny summarized the duty of courts in making declarations upon hearing election petitions. He stated three propositions as follows. One, if the election was conducted so badly that it was not substantially in accordance with the law,
as to elections, the election is vitiated, irrespective of whether the result was affected or not. Two, if the election was so conducted that it was substantially in accordance with the law as to elections, it is not vitiated by a breach of the rules or a mistake at the polls, provided that it did not affect the result of the election. Three, but even though the election was conducted substantially in accordance with the law, as to elections, nevertheless, if there was a breach of the rules or a mistake at the post and it did affect the results, then the election is vitiated. When Lord Denny's propositions are read as a whole, the combined effect of the proposition is that an election will be voided upon the occurrence of infractions that actually affect the votes of the citizens cast at the polling stations and not the incidents of administrative errors and or mistakes committed by officers charged with the conduct of such elections. We find this same sentiment expressed by our own eminent jurist, Adin Rajesi, in the first presidential election petition case, Ekufuado and Addis versus Mahama and Addis. Number four, 2013, Supreme Court of Ghana Law Report, special, special edition, page 73 at page 237. To, to, to 237 to 3, 238, per her, her ladyship had this to say. Quote, courts usually apply the election code to protect, not to defeat the right to vote. Public policy favors salvaging the election and giving effect to the voters' intent, if possible. The right to vote is at the core of our democratic dispensation, a principle I've affirmed in this opinion with reference to the Tenadi and Ahmed Okansi line of cases. End of quote. Conclusion. We conclude this judgment by emphasizing that the petitioner did not demonstrate in any way how the alleged errors and unilateral corrections made by the first respondent affected the validity of the declaration made by the chairperson of the first respondent on the 9th December 2020, as already stated in this judgment. The petitioner has not produced any evidence to rebut the presumption created by the publication of CI 135, for which his action must fail. We have therefore no reason to order a rerun as prayed by the petitioner as in relief F. We accordingly dismiss the petition as having no merit. No. As the court pleases. The petition is dismissed as without merit. We make no other as to cause. We are grateful to the court. We are most grateful for the lucid judgment of the court. Lord, with respect, may speaking for us take the opportunity to thank the registrar of the court and also the staff for their support in getting the proceedings and meeting at that weekends to far processes. We thank them too. I, I just have one comment. I'm surprised that uh, for the various teams, um, your frontline staff uh, did not include any woman. Um, both the petitioner, the first respondent, the second respondent, your frontline legal representation did not include any woman, but there are ladies at the bar, and every effort should be encouraged. No, frontline, the four. And then front line. Order in court, please. Order. Is there any reason somebody like Sheila Minka Premo and former Attorney General uh, Idrusu should be able to um, explain why um, this thing should be encouraged in this day and age? <laughs> my Lord, if I may, oh, okay. if your lordships will recall, front line, front line, you are four. If your lordships will recall, on the first day, we 
proceeded to announce 